So we reviewed the ever so infamously popular book. It ends with us by Colleen Hoover. A while ago. Yeah. Can you can you post what what episode that is here? Yeah. Okay. Boom. There. Yeah. Okay. And I remember and I I regret that we did this, but it was during a time when you and I couldn't meet each other. So there's mm, no video. Right. There's no video oh, of us. I forgot about that. And there's no video of us giggling or just like <laughs> kicking our feet. Kicking our feet or whatever. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's actually a very uh, Yeah trigger warning book didn't we both didn't like it by the way the book when we read it yeah so it's been a while we're we'll recap the book again because there are some parts that i remember that were different from the film but in this particular video we're gonna mostly be discussing the film this is gonna be our first episode of a new segment book flicks Flicks. so it's gonna be any book that has been created into a movie maybe i don't those the series work i don't know i don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes it's gonna be our first intro to this let us know what you think down below so welcome to the book flicks i'm your host jahida and i'm your host chelly chelly why before we start talking about the movie and comparing it to the book why don't we discuss the drama behind the cast and the and the author and you're gonna have to catch me up because okay. i feel like so much shit has happened oh my god and i feel like i've been sending you as much as i could because i wanted to just like remember everything and uh, i'll say when we went to go watch the movie the only thing that my cousin had told me before i left was that apparently when this movie was being como se llama when you're like promoting it beforehand mm-hmm. apparently a lot of the cast was were, they were promoting separately which is kind of like unheard of because yeah. you would think they all like would promote together. Yeah. And I think I had sent you a tweet saying something along the lines of, so, so Justin, Justin B, hold on. Justin Baldoni, who starred in the movie, played Ryle. Yeah. And also directed the film. Mm. He was missing during like the first promotions of the film. Which is crazy because he's one of the main characters. Yeah, exactly. And so now there's a lot of speculation of like there being just, you know, fights, I guess. I don't really know. I don't know what to classify this. If it's just rumors or if it's actually something more serious. Well, it's kind of hard to just think it's just rumors because didn't they all unfollow him too on social oh, media? Oh, yeah. Well, I think most of the cast and Colleen Hoover unfollowed him, <sighs> which is crazy to me because, I mean, I don't I don't know how much uh, power Colleen Hoover had in terms mm-hmm. of what happened in the film. It sounded like she did because... I saw an interview where somebody asked her if, if, that if she wrote the script or something. And she said that, no, that somebody else wrote the script, but they let her see the script and she kind of like, okay. it. Right? Yeah. And she did. Okay. it. So it sounds like she had a lot of say in the film. So in my mind, I'm thinking, I mean, you have this director who also came out in an interview saying that, you know, he's a man. So he knew that him directing it would be on the lens of a man. So there would be moments where he would step back and allow Blake Lively Mm -hmm. to kind of like take over so it can have like the woman's gaze. And I don't know, Justin Baldoni, I have no idea. I've never heard of him before this. Yeah. Because I'm I'm really bad with names anyway. So from what I've seen, it sounds like he really is doing his best to keep the whole purpose of the film which is you know that there are domestic violence survivors Mm -hmm. who go through a lot of shit that you may not know he just wanted to make this movie basically like a message for them that you can you can survive this and that you're not alone and i i really liked him in these interviews because it sounded like he really did care about Mm -hmm what should have been the message of the film but it seems like the other people who are promoting it are not really promoting it as it should be i guess i don't know i don't know how you feel about it because they're saying like oh they're making it seem like too much of a rom-com but Which like how it did kind of seem like that it, it did i agree but then also how do you i don't know how to sen- like be sensitive about how would you promote it i guess like for i don't know I'll get back to that question because I just want to add. You had also mentioned that although he was the director, there were a lot of parts and they were like pretty crucial parts in the book, like the first time Ryle and Lily meet. 
Mm -hmm. um, those parts weren't even written by him, right? Or they so other people took liberties for certain like parts of the directing process. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't know how much he would write though, because yeah. there's a screenwriter. Okay, that's so weird to me. I don't really know how that works. Me neither. His name is still under it, but if other people helped, shouldn't their names be under it too? I think it would be like a long list of I names. I know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that works, me but neither. it just feels like. I don't know to me because we obviously don't know what happened and I feel like until this um, movie is being done being promoted because then there's the whole after mm. after a movie comes out too after it's out of theaters I feel like we'll know more I don't think so don't you, you don't remember so? don't worry darling dude I didn't really follow <laughs> that that much but I remember it being crazy yeah no it was crazy oh my, oh my gosh. god Florence Pugh when she came out with her sleigh dress I need to find it. If I find it, I'll post it here. Oh my gosh. But she was just, killing it. To me, it just kind of feels like he was kind of fucked over. Yeah. Right? I think so. My, okay. Because I had told Charlie that I saw a article, I think from, I don't remember who. I'm not even going to guess. But I, if I find it, I can post it here. Yeah. And where they, oh no, I think it was an interview mm. where they interviewed Blake Lively and she said that her husband, Ryan Reynolds, uh, had written parts of the movie or maybe like some parts of the movie but specifically the rooftop scene which is the first time they meet mm -hmm, which is the meet cute basically <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah very wild. cute um so now because of that because that came out people are speculating oh maybe the director justin feels like he was kind of pushed off of the project and didn't really have that much creative control yeah. and it was mostly given to blake lively and her husband but did you see oh my god somebody asked justin baldoni hey are you are you planning on directing it starts with us like if if, if they make it if they green light it and he was like mm, no i feel like I'm just gonna like step back on that. I think Blake Lively is ready. I think she has. I think she's very creative. I think she could take mm. over. Okay, I don't mm. know how to take that. <laughs> Me neither. I don't know. I don't know how to take that either. He seems super sweet though in the, his interviews. Okay, but I don't know if it's like passive aggressive <laughs> sweet. <laughs> okay, but I honestly, I, I feel like actors to me and actors and writers, mm -hmm. uh, when you're both, I feel like you're on a different. <laughs> you're on a different wavelength i will never understand yeah you know? of course mm -hmm. so i kind of want to talk about coho <laughs> um how did you feel about the fact that coho just okayed it and didn't put more of her say in it because um. i wouldn't if i were her i feel like i would have gone through everything but Oh my god, how do I say this? There are certain scenes and certain lines of dialogue that I feel maybe were realized by somebody were a little too cringy to put on the big screen. And I understand that, but for her to just be like, I didn't really do much. I just okayed it. It's just kind of like... Well, because oh, we saw an interview, basically. Yeah. We saw an interview where they were asking her about the script and she had said that they brought in a bunch of readers... Yeah. And I'm assuming like fans of it and it ends with us and they watched the film or they read the script. I don't even know. And they kind of okayed it. And they okayed it. Yeah. Do you feel like she should have instead called people who have been through domestic abuse? I mean, she should have done that with the book, but, yeah. but I think she probably wanted to keep it as close to the original source material as possible, mm. but also making it less cringy. Yeah. I'm saying that respectfully. Didn't um, Coho private her social media? Um, that's what I heard. And I think it's because of all of the drama surrounding the castmates and her. Basically. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. But oh, my gosh. I feel kind of conflicted. Going back to, you know, Justin Baldoni. I feel really conflicted because she is the author. So the creator of the story. And I know that he's the director. So I, I feel like she obviously sided with Blake Lively and was like, no, I want Blake to, to take control over this. Is that bad? I don't know. I'm very, very conflicted about this because I feel like you're the creator. So I, I guess you should have the final say. I guess so. But if you think about it, too, like even if you were at work and your position title says you do a certain thing, if your boss just came in and was like, I like how that person does it better. 
So I'm just going to make them do it. Mm. It's just kind of like you're belittling my title. Yeah. Because that's kind of how I feel this way. Mm -hmm. It's not that he hates his cast. I hope he doesn't, but who knows? But I feel like it's more so like I fucking, this is my job. And you're not letting me do my job the way I want to do it. Yeah. How he intended to. Yeah. Um, How do you feel about the way the domestic abuse in this movie was shot? Because there was drama with that, right? I'm not sure if there was drama with that, but... You brought it up, and I feel like it was kind of like a thing that people should bring up. What did I say? I don't remember. You had mentioned that the three instances in which Lily's character is abused by Ryle felt like they were really downplayed in comparison to the book. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of true because the way that the movie had shot it, when the scene happens, you don't see it happen. Mm -hmm. It's just like a very like far away wide shot. No, it's like a really close up. Okay. Like you're super close to. But it's in a way that you can't really. Oh, yeah. It's Mm -hmm. in a way that you can't really see what's going on completely. So even the audience is like, well, I mean. It could have been an accident. Like, who who knows? And then the characters are very quick. Or Ryle is very quick to, like, apologize for things that are going on. I think it was supposed to be intentional where Lily is kind of like, oh, he, did it, he didn't mean to do it because even us, the viewers, don't know what the hell happened. So I think we were supposed to parallel her. But I still don't. I still have issues with. I just have issues with Ryle's portrayal in the book and in the film for different reasons, Mm. similar but different reasons. And we can get more into that as we talk about like the differences between both. I just feel like they didn't know how to handle his, how to, how to portray his character. I think the issue was to the fact that they took this on as if it were a Mm rom-com because then when it got to this these very serious scenes i was just kind of like oh shit (laughs) and i think that's kind of what made it ridiculous when we were watching it Mm -hmm. because it always just felt like a total 180 from like the jokes they had been making as characters like before Mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that comedy can't be in other genres because i mean horror and comedy is like something that's kind of sparking now and Mm -hmm. i think that's like really it's really nice because it shows that people aren't one dimensional. You can be very like different in different ways. Mm -hmm. But like the fact that this felt like it was shot specifically to be a rom-com just felt wrong because then when it did come up to those moments, they felt so small. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you felt the same way. Cause I, I cried (laughs) when I watched this movie because it fucking gets to me. It's, Mm -hmm. it's a sad situation for Mm -hmm. a woman to be in and for anyone to be trapped in that type of like relationship and feeling like they can't get out or like they're in the wrong. But I felt like I was supposed to feel bad for Ryle. If we go back to how the film portrayed him. So when Ryle was first introduced in the book, he like beats the shit out of these fucking chairs, throws them around. He's had a hard day at work. Lily is there. She's like hanging off of the ledge or has one leg off of the ledge. She's sitting there and she looks at him. He looks at her and he's like, can you get off of the ledge, please? You're making me nervous. So it was very obvious that it started off with a huge red flag because he was obviously like kicking these chairs around. Yeah. And then I don't know. I think we were supposed to like fall in love with his charm, but it was very hard for me to find him charming when he came out so abrasive. Yeah. And in the book specifically, I felt like he came off kind of creepy. Because you know what they changed? Mm. Do you remember in the book that when Lily meets him, he's like, oh, I want to fuck you. And she's just like, "Mm, I don't do that. No. And so they go their separate ways. But he first takes a picture of her, which is weird. Oh, yeah. And then they go their separate ways. And then she ends up opening her flower shop and meets his sister Mm -hmm. just by some random occurrence in Boston. I think Boston is big. I've never been there. (laughs) And and then, so the sister who's rich is like, I can work for free. Don't worry, girl. They become best friends. And then all of a sudden, oh my God, hold on. I'm so sorry. There was something I wanted to bring up about their first meeting. When they first meet, do you remember how they did their naked truths? Yes. She tells him about her mom 
about how her mom was abused and how she witnessed her dad be a piece of shit of father or not yeah. father but husband and that he was okay with her and ryle was like oh i'm so sorry that's really sad so to me when it was revealed in the movie when she tells him oh hey my mom was abused yeah. it was so like i don't know i don't know if you noticed but i laughed uncomfortably because ryle was like oh i'm sorry i didn't know oh as opposed to if you did know then you would be like i would never do it babe yeah like what does that mean i don't know so then that pissed me off and then once lily meets him again in the in the book it was different because she hurt herself. Do you remember that? That she mm -hmm. like fell or something? Yeah. So Alyssa, the sister, calls Ryle and is like, hey, can you come help my friend? Oh, ice yeah. her. Ice yeah. her and whatever. And that's how they slowly started to hang around each other again. Mm -hmm. But in the in the film, I think after their first hangout, he was like, hey, I just really, really want to kiss you so fucking bad. Yeah. If I could kiss you right now, I could I just get you out of my system. No big deal. And she's just like, OK, one kiss. Fine. So yep. they handled that portion a little bit better, in my opinion, because okay. in the book, do you remember that he like went all across all the fucking apartment complex, knocking on all of oh, these yeah. doors I forgot until he finally found her and was like, I knocked on 29 doors just to find you. And I movie. really need to fuck you. Oh, my God. Because in the movie, she mentions that she doesn't live there at the very beginning. So but he does mention, like, I did go to the rooftop and wait for you, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. That wasn't as bad. I, I didn't like because there were points where you do see his red flags. But I feel like they're so concealed that it's just kind of like you have to watch the movie again to see the red flags. It's like one of those moments. Mm -hmm. That point when they're at Alyssa's party. Alyssa, right? Yeah. When they're at Alyssa's party, which is Ryle's sister, and uh, Blake Lively, Lily walks in and she like takes off her her jacket and it shows like her really like really slay top. And then Ryle comes and follows her. And I forget what they're talking about. I think um, she tells him, like, you need to stop flirting with me. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I don't want to stop flirting with you. And they mm -hmm. have like a back and forth. And he just goes like, shut up and listen to me. Yeah. And it came out like super like. Firm. dominating yeah and i was like mm. ooh, red flag no but i think people giggled behind us yeah. like people were giggling yeah and which was, is crazy to it's me crazy because so when we went to go see it ends with us in in theaters we saw it in mm -hmm. theaters obviously not illegally mm -hmm. even though i did suggest that you didn't even laugh i suggested <laughs> that and you i suggested that i don't remember which video and you were just like anyway mm -hmm. <laughs> we're not doing that here <laughs> so theaters by the way so i just want to say i just want to say we don't even have to say anything else about this watching it in the theater really changes the vibe it does it makes it kind of like it makes it more special i think yeah it really did us to, holding hands because you get to see everybody else's reaction too yeah dude. so our theater was very very giggly and very uh reactive to what was happening mm -hmm. you know obviously nothing in comparison to the marvel fandom but it's yeah. still it was still reactive Mm -hmm. And so I think in that moment, they giggled. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. Well, I'm there scared. were a lot of moments like that because I feel like our, our theater was very Team Ryle. Oh, yeah, definitely. Ugh, which is crazy to me. Or oh, they just really liked him. When it comes to the first time that he hits her, it is when they're making something in the oven and he's talking about it's like a celebratory meal because he's going to have a really big surgery soon. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. When he's pulling it out of the oven, he doesn't have oven mitts on. And it's burning. I yeah. think it's like smoking and shit. And, mm -hmm. and she's laughing and he's like, oh, let me grab it really quickly. So he's like, he doesn't wear oven mitts. Yep. Because he's an idiot. Yeah, that's dumb. And then um, she's going over to him because he got burned and he strikes her mm -hmm. and she falls back. Mm -hmm. And in this movie, you can't really see what happened, but mm -hmm. you do see her react like, did you just... Like, what did you just do? Mm -hmm. And he immediately is like, are you OK? I'm so sorry. Are you OK? Are you OK? Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be OK. And he's like hella comforting her. That didn't happen in the book. Right. In the book. One of my main major complaints of the book is that they tried to portray it as like, oh, I just blacked out. Oh, no, that wasn't me. I blacked That's out. That's so dumb. But then the last the third incident completely derails that whole fucking idea. Mm -hmm. so 
in the book i remember and i wish it would have happened the same in the film and i brought it up to chelly after the film in the film he completely switches and is like oh my god i'm so sorry i'm so sorry fuck my hand i don't care babe it's fine like yeah. i don't I, like i want to be here for you it might have been the same in the film i don't remember but in the book she was pissed she was like if you ever hit me again i will know you did that on purpose and i'll never talk to you again because i saw what it did to my mom mm -hmm. and i'm not going through that yep because her mom was in an abusive relationship so she doesn't want to live the way that her mother lived and ryle's like no i will never do that again i promise never and that was totally an accident mm -hmm. yeah they didn't do that i just feel like even the well, like you said, they're trying to put it so that we're experiencing this the way Blake Lively's character does. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to make us like Ryle. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what or, I said. Or even question it. Yeah. Well, that's kind of how I had felt like the first time we were reading the book. Because mm -hmm. like it seems like a good relationship until that point. Mm -hmm. And so the second time, I don't remember what the second one was. The second time. So oh, first... He first yeah. there's a, th a third character because this is kind of like a love triangle weirdly yeah. there's a character named atlas who she had a thing with when she was younger and they were like each they were like each other's first loves and atlas had always mentioned like boston is where it's at and i think they met in maine mm -hmm. i think and he was like everything's better in boston better in boston babe and so now that she's older she moved to boston not not really looking for him. I think she just wanted to experience if Boston really is that great, I guess. Yeah. And she ends up going to this new restaurant. In the book, it's called Bibs. In the sh in the movie, it's called Roots. Roots. A root? Root. And this is the moment when she, s when she sees him again. Mm -hmm. And he's the chef. He owns the place. And he sees her. Oh, this is the second time she sees her. Whatever. It doesn't matter. And she notices that she has a black eye. And that Ryle's hand is bandaged and he completely loses his shit. Mm -hmm. And Ryle, um, well, first Lily leaves and goes to the bathroom with Atlas and they talk about it. And Atlas makes a comment like, you're going to end up just like your mom, like you're following down her footsteps. And Crazy. Lily's just like, I'm fucking out of here. So she gets out of the restroom. But at the same time, Ryle sees both of them get mm -hmm. out of the restroom. Oh, and God. he's just kind of like, what were you doing in the restroom? What were you doing in the restroom? And then they fucking atlas and ryle go at it yeah <laughs> i mean it's not funny it's not funny but our audience of like the movie theater just the fact that they're like, <gasps> they were <gasps> gasping oh, oh my they God. Were <laughs> and you and i were just like oh shit oh shit <laughs> they were clutching their pearls and i was yeah. just like oh my god oh, fuck them up atlas <laughs> know. it's just funny having read it you know yeah and knowing yeah. the beats but i remember that was very intense and it ends with um ryle walking out and blake live or sorry lily walks out too and is just kind of going like it's nothing it means nothing it was nothing and he just says like it could be anyone else but not him yeah it's the only thing and because he obviously realizes that this is her first love atlas mm -hmm. and so after this atlas ends up going to her shop writes down his phone number puts it in her phone case oh, yeah. and then just like tells her if you ever need it call me i hope you don't need it though and so one random day and it's a pretty good day um, and also this is months after yes ryle is in their bedroom and drops lily's phone on accident and the phone case pops off and he sees this number so he calls it and at that time Lily was on FaceTime with her mom in the movie. So yeah. you hear Ryle throw something and Lily's like, mom, hang up. I gotta, I gotta do something. And so she goes to Ryle and is like, what's wrong? And he tells her like, I called the number back of your phone case. Why do you have his number? Mm -hmm. Why do you have his? And she's like, it's nothing like it's, yeah. he just gave it to me because he assumed from the bandages and everything. And then he, I don't think she even, not saying she had to explain herself, yeah. but I don't think she said anything. Because I remember thinking, why isn't she telling him? Like she did. She she just told him. Like he looked. He looked at my eye, and he like. I don't think she used the word assumed, but 
you know, he like pieced it together and, you know, it was nothing. It was nothing. Mm -hmm. And he it looks like he's about to calm down, but he walks out. He throws the phone on the ground and then storms out. And she follows him and they go to the stair staircase, the stairwell. And in the way it looks, it looks as if Lily just fell back. But it also kind of looks like he it kind of just cuts before you can really say what happened. Oh, yeah, but us it reading it, we know he pushed her off the stairs. Mm-hmm. But if you're just watching the film, you don't know for sure what happened. And in the in the film, so then she wakes up on the couch and he's like stitching her. He's stitching her, cleaning her, and he tells her, you just fell. That's crazy. Yeah. In the book, she was hospitalized. I could have sworn she was. I don't remember exactly, but I I could have sworn she was in the hospital. But he was like, I remember him being like, oh, I, like it was you just fell. Mm. And it was an accident. You I know? could have sworn to that in the book. There were more situations where Lily had to excuse why she looked the way she did. Yeah, I think so, too. Can I say, too, we, we didn't mention, but the first time with her eye when he when he um hit her. I thought that. The bruise didn't look as bad as I had imagined it would. So in the book, it was different from the film. But in the book, when he when that happened, he shoved her and she fell against the counter. Remember, she hit her eye against Mm -hmm. the corner of it. And that's why it looked so bad. Yeah, I agree with you. I I don't know. But even it's the like second a really time. it's like a really tricky subject because it you know obviously we don't want someone to experience something worse. But if you want it to if you want to talk about domestic violence and you want it to be impactful for people who've survived it, I would assume. Yeah, and then also you, know? you want to emulate what you wrote on your book. And I don't know because then I'm also thinking of people who are watching this who are younger because I I work with younger people. I know how they think not true not really i i would assume that i do but first one didn't look as bad as i thought it would and even the second one falling down the staircase and all you have is a cut that you can hide behind your bangs Mm -hmm. like it to me it feels like throughout the movie people would be like well it's not that bad yeah it's not that bad yeah because she didn't hurt any other part of her body because she fell down the stairs yeah so then Uh, yeah going to the third one Mm -hmm. so again shit happens and they're good for a while because i feel like this book does a lot of like time and even the film like it like does a lot of time jumps yes i do want to say it is bad i don't want that to be like cut around weirdly it is bad the things that he does to her yeah it's just the the movie portrayed it as if it wasn't in my opinion yeah because Oh, my God. Again, bringing up weirdly, I'm not saying the book is better by any means, but I'm just saying that at least in the book, she kept telling him, I I don't want this to be like a constant thing. You know, like, I don't want to go through what my mom went through. Like, I don't want to like, I don't want this relationship. But he would be like making false promises. Like, don't worry. It's just because I have these demons. Oh, what I hated that they changed from the book to the film, which is so weird because I don't want to make it seem like the book is by any means amazing. But in the book, it was Ryle who told Lily about the fact that he went through something traumatic when he was six, I believe with his older brother. And it was a moment when they were playing with, with a gun and they thought it was a toy gun, but he shot his brother and it ended up killing him. Yeah. Yeah. And ever since then, he's had these moments where he blacks out. Well, they didn't describe that in the film, but in the book, it was like a huge thing. Like, I just black out, so I don't know what's going on with me. Yeah. And in the film, it was actually his sister who told Lily about it. And then said, like, ever since then, he's never been the same. Yeah. I hate that shit. I hate the whole having to have an excuse of why he's a shitty person. Mm Mm-hmm. But let's talk about the third incident. So the third one was um, in a magazine. Alyssa had told Lily that they they ranked in the top 10 of places you can visit in Boston, which is crazy. That's fucking wild. She just opened. Mm -hmm. Um, And while she was looking at it, there was also a top one and top one was Root. 
but she didn't we didn't see her read it it wasn't until she w- was I, home i think that was like a whole different category that was like food okay food and restaurant when she's at home she's making like a celebratory dinner for her and ryle and ryle comes home and is like hey i want you to read through this and i want you to read specifically this one number one and specifically the last paragraph and he writes about well it's atlas who they had interviewed for uh root winning this and he said that he named the restaurant root after a girl he loved and um talked about how he had carved her an oak heart because of how much she like cared about her and then ryle kind of pieces it together like that's why you have a heart tattoo Mm -hmm. we didn't really talk about that but he brings it up often in the movie and that's like to him that was one of her favorite parts of her body that was his favorite part of her body and um now knowing that it was something that atlas did or atlas had a part in Mm -hmm. he gets really upset so then she's telling him like you're overreacting nothing happened like i'm not i can't control what he says basically and he takes her to the couch and tries to take advantage of her and i told you this but to me it felt like he did and even in the book to me it felt like he did because in the book when uh, when she runs away from that situation she goes to atlas and atlas takes her to the hospital and even the hospital attendant asks like in the book they're like well we can give you this one test to check uh, it's called a uh, an r word kit to check if you were r worded and lily's character is like that didn't happen to me so no and when i had read it i didn't really understand but to me it had felt like she was covering for ryle because she knows that he did Mm. that's what i had felt Um. and even watching it you you see them both struggling and she like screams in pain and you were like, yeah, but that was like when, when she was bitten because he bites the tattoo. He, he bites her, yeah. But it just kind of felt like it was more. But I feel like if he would have t- taken advantage of her all the way, I feel like it would have been more explicit. You think so? In the book, in the book, it makes sense because he headbutts her and then bites her. And, she and she's bl- a little and disoriented. She, she blacks out, yeah. And... In the film, he bites her, her tattoo, her collarbone, and she just, like, gets away from him. I don't know. Tim, I, I, I honestly think he just bit her. Well, when she goes to the hospital in the movie, I didn't like this. She's with Atlas, and the lady asks her the same thing, but instead of using the R-word kit, which is what people know it as, it was like, oh, do you need the same kit? Because that's the name of it. And they never use the word R word. And it just kind of felt like there's going to be people watching this that don't know what you're talking about. And I don't know. That that feels like a weird thing to cut if this is supposed to be a movie about awareness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because then people aren't going to be aware it, that that's what you were it, trying to talk about. It almost felt like they were censoring themselves. Which is crazy because there were other parts they didn't really censor. Mm-hmm. But... <sighs> this this was crazy in the book yeah it was just like a very scary moment i remember feeling like ryle felt really unhinged and i also want to bring up because i've said it already you know how in the book they tried to make it seem like oh no he just blacks out my bad babe i don't remember anything Mm -hmm. he literally planned this so he doesn't black out he planned he waited for her got this whole fucking magazine had her read it and yeah. then attacked her. So it's like you don't black out. Yeah. You're just an asshole. Mm-hmm. But in the film, they didn't they didn't do that whole like split portrayal of him where he just didn't remember. Yeah. It just kind of felt like and and I hope this doesn't come off as insensitive. But the way that the film made me feel was like Ryle was just always pushed to this. Yeah, like it, 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 it circumstances just kind of always made it seem like there is something going on with Lily and Atlas. And maybe that was the maybe that's what they wanted to do. I don't know. Like, did they want me to feel like, oh, he's not that bad of a guy then, you know? 
I don't know. It did make both of us feel like that because I remember we walked out and it was like, were we supposed to feel bad for Ryle? Because it kind of feels like the only reason this happened was because, like you said, Lily pushed him to this. Yeah. Or just. But why is that what they're trying to go for? I don't understand. Yeah. I felt like they didn't portray his character accurately. Even if they would have just done a portrayal of how he was in the book, I feel like that would have been more successful in in the way that he was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. The movie basically ends. Oh, no, it doesn't end the same because it it follows the whole um, Lily stays at Atlas's place for a long time while she's setting up her new life because she figures out after the abuse, the third one. Um, she is pregnant and she does plan on keeping it. She tells Alyssa and Alyssa's like, I mean, as a sister, I would want you to forgive my brother. But as a friend, I would never want you to go back to him. Yeah. And she said, I would never talk to you again if you talk, if you get taken back. Yeah. And Ryle continuously calls her, but she never answers. He mm-hmm. never visits the flower shop. And then the first time they see each other again in the movie is when he's helping her build the crib, the crib. And then again, when she gives birth and she has a moment that's like, you deserve to be over here. Mm -hmm. Come meet our daughter together. It got me with the whole like I named my daughter Emerson. And he was like, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. But at the same time, like, I just feel like we never really got to see both these characters ever have deep conversations. So it's just like a little weird that she just knows and they just never talk about it because yeah. that feels like something you should probably talk about with yeah. your partner. And also by this point and in the film, it's different in the film. She basically cut him off. And the, the, the only time she saw him was like Chelly said, was building the crib. But in the book, I could have sworn they were kind of like teetering between like, do we want to be parents together? Don't we? Do we? Don't yeah, Because even when they were building the crib, he would stand there and then i remember in the book it would describe it as he looked hopeful yeah like it it felt like there was a little shred of like this might work out Mm -hmm. but in the book not in the book in the movie it was clear that she wasn't gonna go back to him well it wasn't clear and well it was clear to us but i feel like to ryle it wasn't until he was holding emerson and then she's like we shouldn't be together and she said i want a divorce yeah and he was like don't do this don't do this but then when she paints the picture of like if you knew that our daughter's boyfriend had hit her had pushed her down the stairs and lied about it and had done basically all of this what would you say to her and i was like well i would beg her to never see him again Mm -hmm. and beg her to never go back to him yeah and then it just kind of ends i hate that they didn't show ryle again after this yeah because it kind of makes it seem like ryle was the bigger man he he knew that he had to walk away yeah because in the the book he doesn't he's still very much a part of well they co-parent yeah he's very much part of emerson's life Mm -hmm. and i remember you hated the ending of the first book because um i I did emerson who is like a toddler gets dropped off with ryle and Mm -hmm. ryle is with her alone and it's just kind of like you would leave your baby alone with that man. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I would not trust that man. But I think the same thing happens in the movie. They just didn't show Ryle. No, uh, Lily's mom was taking care of her. Oh. They were in the park, remember? Mm, that's what And happened. then you see Lily's character walking through, like, I think a farmer's market. I don't know. And then she sees Atlas and they kind of just like smile at each other and they're walking towards each other. And that's how it ends. Well, it ends with her walking away and then coming back and it's like, are you free later? Wait, are you free? Yeah. Mm. yeah. No Finding Nemo reference at all, by the so, way. So, five out of five. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say, but Ryle and Lily had gotten married, I think, after the first uh, incident. Not. That's also kind of... Re- not right after, but... That's also kind of a red flag on how he proposed, though, because it's in front of people. And also, he took away from the birth of his sister's, like, kid yeah well in the film yeah i know you're having a baby Alyssa. i know but suddenly i want to be a a husband (laughs) oh my god i think it was supposed to be like a cute moment i fucking hate that shit i I would hate that i'd be like get the fuck out (laughs) oh my god and it's also like as lily it's like what the fuck am i supposed to say you're not letting me like think this over you're you're doing it in front of your family yeah i can't say no 
she didn't say no. So, um, yeah, and yeah, that was the film. <laughs> that was the um, film. Shout out to the two times it showed Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it's so funny because we had talked about whether or not they would even discuss Ellen DeGeneres because in the book, Lily was such a huge fan. Mm-hmm. She was so... She would rely on Ellen DeGeneres for, you know, emotional support. And she even had a diary where she would write, like, logs to Ellen. And it would be like, dear Ellen. Yeah, well, that was her diary. Yeah. It would be letters to Ellen. And I just I just thought it was so funny. Because even in the, in the diary, her motto was just keep swimming. That was mm-hmm. the motto. Mm-hmm. And um, they did show Ellen DeGeneres, but just like on the TV, like in the background, in the film. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. You thought they were going to change it to like Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, dear, dear Jimmy. <laughs> dear Jimmy. Oh, my gosh. Just went to Universal Studios and thought about you. <laughs> um, I thought the relationship between Atlas and uh, Lily lacked passion really i felt like it wasn't there people love him crazy because i didn't feel the first time they meet i felt no chemistry it was just kind of like oh you're here yeah oh sick lily (laughs) who would have (laughs) thought and then he walks away and it's like that's not my atlas my angel of a man atlas that's not him Mm -hmm. no I, I kind of agree with you. I kind of wish that they would have built her relationship with Atlas, you know, in the, in the present time. Not them as younger, yeah. but as older. I wish they would have built their relationship a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know. I, I liked, I really liked that line that I could not understand. <laughs> Remember? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny because after... After the third time, the third incident, the third incident between Lily and Ryle, Atlas takes Lily to her job and, you know, she's going to go back home to eventually she gets a new apartment, whatever. She's she's gone. And Atlas hugs her. And in the book and in the movie, they say. When you're open, I'm going to butcher this when you're open to falling in love again, just fall in love with me. But the actor that played Atlas like hugs Lily and <laughs> fall in love with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote, huh? <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. I, lo- uh? <laughs> I literally looked at Chelly and I was like, what the fuck did he say? It oh sounded beautiful, God. but I could not grasp it. <laughs> he mumbled a lot. Dude, I just Or maybe thought, I just have bad hearing. I don't no, know. No, I think that Atlas's actor, he must be, like, he might be a great actor in other stuff. I don't think this role was, like, for him. Mm. I don't think he looked like what i imagined that was oh, to look okay. like too the hairstyle facial hair loved it loved it who would you have picked for atlas Not him. um no questions please <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i don't know but it just didn't feel right mm, okay uh, i don't know i don't know and i guess it it just didn't feel right because like i didn't see like the yearning in him for mm. her oh that was missing yeah that was missing i wanted to see it in his face <laughs> but he just didn't look like he was in love with blake lively because Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds? In the back. <laughs> you keep your eyes off my wife. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Did you see the interview with him and the actor? No. He was like hella thirsting over him. Really? Oh, my Ryan God. Ryan Reynolds was thirsting over the actor who played Atlas. I thought it was so fucking funny. Mm. Then it wasn't that he wasn't looking at Lily. He was just <laughs> looking at Ryan. It's like, please look at me instead. I yeah. actually don't really mind like like his face. I don't mind his face. I don't mind his acting. It was just those moments that he mumbled his line. And that was just my, my main issue. And I, I wish they did have more cute moments between them that I, w- I would feel like, oh, yeah, he, they, there's yearning in between them. And can I say, if they release the second movie and they don't have ryle that's crazy that doesn't feel right because ryle does play a pretty important part in the second movie Mm. because it kind of shows like second book second book it kind of shows like no matter well they're co-parenting it's like she can't really escape him Mm -hmm. she's stuck with him forever yeah well i mean she can technically if she wanted to but she really wants her daughter to have both parents Mm mm-hmm but I don't know. It's just, it feels weird. And I, 
overall watching this movie i wish atlas would have been different blake lively was blake lively um i thought ryle's actor did a good job playing ryle but i do feel like the moments of abuse didn't really shine through so it just kind of felt like it was a smaller portion which it was supposed to be a bigger portion of the movie Mm -hmm. i don't know it was crazy it was crazy i i was laughing because i was remembering there's this scene in the movie where she's gonna give her dad a eulogy she's gonna you know talk to the crowd and tell them five things she loves about her dad yeah and so she was like she pulled out a napkin and there was like one through five but it was it was empty she didn't have anything because she fucking hated her dad with good reason because he was abusive to her mother and (laughs) there was a scene in the movie i forgot what scene exactly but do you remember when she was like oh yeah i loved my dad and i looked at you and i was like one two three four five what (laughs) what you had zero reasons to love him it's so funny because there were so many serious moments like that in the movie where you and i would just look at each other (laughs) and be like no be fucking for real that's so dumb um i wish that there would have been more between her and her mom Mm. like having a conversation about her her mother staying with her dad yeah and paralleling that with her and ryle because i think they did have a conversation in the book i don't really remember how it went they basically had a conversation they kind of did in the movie too but it was so short not really no it was just a once a one line thing of Mm -hmm. like why did you never leave him it was because it was easier this way Mm -hmm. they have more of a deeper conversation in the book about that yeah they they don't really acknowledge ryle being abusive in the film well even remember my sister had brought it up because she went to go watch it with us uh the ending part where the mom is walking with lily and is like i'm so proud of you and it kind of makes it seem like i'm proud of you for leaving him but then it's like they're in the funeral or in the graveyard yeah they're in the cemetery and it's like i'm proud of you for visiting your dad so it's like she just says i'm proud of you it's very so open. I think you're supposed to assume that she's proud of her for leaving Ryle, but she's finally visiting her dad. So I think she's actually talking about that maybe or both. I don't know. Yeah. But in the book, I, I think that. I think she said something along the lines of it's better to leave right away, because if you keep forgiving him, then it just gets harder to leave. Mm. Something like that. So I wish that they would have had a, a conversation like that, but it didn't happen. So overall, eh. mm. it was a movie. It was a movie. It's funny because after the movie ended, like people were like clapping and you and I just stared at each other like, mm. we're not giving this movie a clap. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I really hope that Justin, the guy who plays Ryle, isn't a bad guy. I really hope he's not. I Same. really hope he's not. Me too. But seeing this movie kind of crumble, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm just sitting here like, mm. with tea. Coho, next move. <laughs> <That movie's yours. laughs> like a fucking chess yeah. board. <laughs> she's no matter what, right she's fine. Yeah, she is. She's rich. Mm-hmm. She's fine. Mm-hmm. And she's always going to be like that. And I just don't understand it because there's so many books that you and I have read in this podcast alone mm-hmm. that I feel like deserve a movie. Mm-hmm. You got a coho book? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of um, actors and actresses are always um, photographed in like um, airports holding a coho book. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Why a coho book? Well, I, I, wasn't it that Blake Lively lo- loved this book so much that she just like made it happen? Because she was a producer. That's crazy. I don't know what producers do. Produce? I have no idea what that means. Producers give the money to back it. So it's <gasps> their money that's paying for everyone. Oh. Everything. Suddenly everything makes sense now. Yeah. <laughs> that's why she had so much say. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it feels wrong. Well, I could recommend books to Blake Lively. Oh my God. <laughs> Tell me what you like, Blake. Coho. I just, I don't know. And it feels kind of weird. I know her husband's Ryan Reynolds. But doesn't it kind of feel weird that your husband just comes in and is like, wait, can we like get it like this, though? And it's like, you're not part of the team. <laughs> well, in the in an interview, I don't know if it was the same one that I mentioned earlier. She did say that they always help each other out in their projects. That's so weird. she helped. 
That's that, weird. How's that weird? I would love that. Wouldn't it Me be weird if my hubby, <laughs> if he came to your job and was like, here, I'll do it, babe. But it's different because it's creative. I don't know. It's weird. because It's weird because what if you, what if you were the, you were the Justin and you're like, oh my God, I really want. I would never sh- be the Justin. I I'm really just want this scene shot like this. Mm. And then the actor who is only an actor brings their husband and their husband's like, no, but let's she's not just an instead. actor. She's a producer. Okay, but like <laughs> she put money to pay us. She didn't put money for how it was going to be shot. So, but I feel like Colleen Hoover. You do have a lot to say though. Colleen Hoover. I'm only assuming because Colleen Hoover loves Blake Lively, so I, I'm assuming that um, she was the one who pushed it to be like, yeah, let them have a say. I don't know. Maybe it's because I feel only distaste towards Colleen Hoover books. Maybe. I just I don't. I don't really know what the right answer is because all of this is speculation anyway. Yeah, it we is. We don't know what actually happened mm-hmm. behind the scenes. I'm it's scared also, that everyone's wrong and it's just like completely different. Because it could also just be that they're all just fucking with people. So now people are like, well, now I got to watch it. Yeah. Did you hear about Joaquin Phoenix? No. Joaquin Phoenix had, oh my God, I'm going to totally fucking butcher this. Here's what I heard. Joaquin Phoenix created mm-hmm. a film, uh, a gay film where he was going to star mm-hmm. in it. Five days before it was set to film, um, all of this money was already spent on this, right? Yeah. He backed out and said he got cold feet. So now everyone in the fucking crew is losing money because he doesn't want to do it anymore. (sighs) Isn't that crazy? That's why I'm telling you, like, trying to sympathize and understand actors, we will never. Because I can't just imagine, like, it was like that one. Remember that video of... King, I forget her name. John Legend's wife, Chris. Chrissy Teigen. When she was like, uh, "Hate this wine, pour it down the sink," and then people were like, "She's trying to relate to us, but that mm. wine is worth fifteen thousand dollars a bottle." Yeah. So it's kind of like to me Ooh. understanding, being like, "I know I spent two million dollars, but I, I don't think I could be like, I don't think I, <laughs> I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could kiss a like, man. Kiss a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I I, think- <laughs> has he not played?" F- Fruity character? I thought he I'm had. pretty sure that man has kissed a man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so too. What? So like I to me I can't understand just being like, oh, two million dollars, that's nothing. So I'm good. So this pocket change. Yeah, Joker two either. is about to come out. Okay, I'm good. I know. <laughs> I can make that on cameo. Turn that shit on. <laughs> I'm good in ten minutes. Dude, so I just I don't get it. And I never will get it. No, so when people are just like, don't you just feel so. And I do feel bad because I mean, I'm an empath. So <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. No, I mean. Not I, the I, empath. No, I do feel bad. Like. I fucking hate that Shane Dawson ruined that shit. I, know. I can't even say I'm an empath without. No, it's so funny because sometimes I'll say that to my students. I was like, you need to be empathetic. And they're like, OK, Shane Dawson. <laughs> like, oh, wow. <laughs> Still relevant with the children um with my kids from like six years ago yeah oh okay 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 (laughs) got it i can't feel that bad because at the end of the day even if they're crying themselves to sleep they have fucking hundreds and not even like used hundreds like crisp clean (laughs) blotting their fucking tears like it's okay bitch it is crazy it's not gonna change their lives it's not damn yeah well, I am interested to see what else comes out, if anything else comes out mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, be- the behind the scenes of this film. Mm-hmm. I hope we learn more just, you know, because I'm a little chismosa. I know. I hope so, too. <laughs> I'm here for the cheese mm-hmm. Um Overall, movie was OK. It was OK. Could have been better. <sighs> I just I wish that there were more um probably like better books that get movies well emily henry's emily books. Henry, yeah i can't fucking wait i know well let us know what you thought about this book slash movie what do you think about atlas what do you think about atlas what do you think about the characters the people who played them what do you think about ryan reynolds being like not like that not like that people were saying that they that they wanted to create their own barben barbenheimer barbenheimer Bar- barbenheimer barbenheimer because of the deadpool wolverine it ends with us, but I feel like that's so insensitive because it ends with us. It ends with us is about domestic violence. Yeah. Well, let us know your thoughts down <laughs> below. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.